Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar titled Simplifying Medical and IoT Device Security Presented by Healthcare Innovation. I'm Rajiv Leventhal, I'm the Managing Editor of Healthcare Innovation. Today's program is sponsored by Medigate and Fortinet. Thank you to our sponsors and to our audience for giving us your time and attention today. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping details to go over. First, to submit a question, please use a Q&A box to the left of your video window at any time. You do not have to wait until the end of the program to submit a question. For technical issues, please press F5 to refresh. And if that doesn't work, you can submit a question with your issue through the Q&A panel. Finally, we strongly encourage you to join our webinar conversation on Twitter today. You can do that by tweeting uh, using the hashtag HILiveWebinar. And with that, I'd like to introduce our speakers for today's program. We have with us Stefan Goldberg, who is the VP of System Engineering at Medigate. And we have Troy Ament, who is the Chief Information Security Officer at Fortinet. Uh, gentlemen, the floor is yours, and Troy will kick it off with you first. Thanks, Rajiv. Um, so thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, so we'll kind of jump right into it. So the, the healthcare um, landscape has, has changed, obviously, dramatically here in, in 2020. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has, you know, dramatically created a new healthcare challenges uh, for, for health systems, other infrastructure, and that, that includes medical devices and other internet connected devices. What has compounded the issues has really been budget shortfalls, right? Uh, I think all health health delivery organizations uh, in 2020 and, and going into 2021, um, anything that we put in place really must drive bottom line value. So what we're gonna talk about in this session is what technology tools healthcare organizations should be investing into to secure their medical devices, how we're preparing for the next security challenge, and then how are HDOs going to address the budgetary issues for this next coming year? So we wanted to take a little bit of a dive into the, the healthcare cybersecurity landscape and look at some statistics. You know, healthcare providers, you know, going back to, to my time over the last 15 years of being in the provider space, um, you know, have, have been protecting a growing attack surface, right? So an estimated 87% of healthcare providers now use internet connected medical devices, right? 80% of providers are making significant cloud adoption as their strategic priority, and about 60% of healthcare data breaches are carried out by internal threats. Uh, the attacks are ongoing. Attacks against healthcare has increased by over 60% year over year. Uh, we're, we're seeing a significant increase in ransomware this year. We're, I think that number is going to be, you know, Last year was 60%. Um, I think we're going to see a larger number driving up and towards 70 to 80% with, with what's happened this year. 41% uh, uh, of healthcare data breaches have been caused by email. That continues to be the, the leading uh, vector for, for uh, these breaches, which then lead to attacks to connected medical devices. And then almost 19% of ransomware attacks target healthcare, making it the second most targeted industry out there. Some more uh, statistics, which I, I believe are interesting. So 41% of healthcare organizations suffered an operational outage that affected productivity. Now, now this data is from 2019. And what we've seen in the last 60 to 90 days is, is more significant outages that have been occurring. So instead of maybe a, a ransomware attack affecting connected medical devices and connected, um, you know, Internet of Things, um, being a day or two, what we're now seeing is these being a, a full week or two or three or maybe a month of, of complete outage due to, due to ransomware attacks. And this isn't just affecting, you know, computers or personal devices. These have spread over into um, connected medical devices as well and have putting really clinical, you know, physical safety at risk. So we're seeing that within 40% of cases, 32% of cases, experienced a breach that damaged their brand. 31% in already a really difficult year for, for health systems have had a, a revenue impact. And then 25% of, of organizations are now losing business critical data, which are, are re leading to the OCR reports that we're, we're seeing out there with regard to, to data breaches. 
Uh, so the repercussions are dramatic. 72% of healthcare organizations leak medical data. And then each, um, the average cost of a healthcare data breach is, is average right now at about $6.5 million. So what's the scale of the challenge? So this is some data that we put together uh, in securing medical devices. It's inherently complex because of the scale at which devices are deployed in a hospital setting. So today, on average, each medical bed or each patient bed within a facility has about 10 to 15 devices. Um, right now in the United States, um, and this number is a little light, uh, coming from, from 20, uh, 2019, we had 925,000 staff beds. We now know with COVID-19 that number has grown dramatically with regard to the, the heroic efforts our, our frontline and, and health systems have, have done. And so overall, on average, we believe there's about 9 to 14 million total uh, bedside connected medical devices today. So, so this is a really interesting um, um, diagram on on where we've come from, and not a lot has changed. So the statistics that you look at here really gauge um, information security maturity across connected medical devices and where we've where we've been and where we, we've gone to. But but the overwhelming um, you know facts here are that not much has changed. If you look at medical device security is integrated into the enterprise security architecture. That, that's really only changed by 3% over the course of the last five years, so moving from 2014 to 2019. Testing and verifying that network medical devices are secure and free from malware hasn't changed. Uh, risk assessments is the one area I think we have seen some, some pretty good work. So 34% uh, now of organizations are doing and conducting a full risk assessment and have identified potential security threats. That's up from 22%, but we, we know that no, more needs to occur there. Um, and then the, the other statistics there uh, kind of follow that same theme. So what are the technologies healthcare providers should have in place to secure internet connected medical devices? Well, one, we believe is network access control um, systems that can, that can really do effective segmentation. Two, you need a, a solution like Medigate that can give actionable clinical insights about device identity, function, and, and usage. That, that intelligence and visibility really feeds into the rest of the tools that, that empowers security analysts and security professionals to, to secure systems effectively. Internal uh, segmentation of firewalls. And then four, now that this edge that is, that is growing out within many health systems is growing really an edgeless organization, a, a software defined uh, wide area network strategy as well. So here's some essential guidance. Uh, I think first and foremost, leveraging frameworks like Zero Trust, NIST to holistically cover all aspects of health systems operation that includes um, cyber physical systems. Um, segregate medical devices and other valuable IT resources according to their risk posture, right? So maybe a, a newer uh, medical device that you brought in that you've done a significant risk assessment that you've, that you've looked at, maybe that doesn't rise to the, to the level that needs more segmentation and you can have a lower risk tolerance there. Um, then third, increase the visibility of medical devices at the edge and on the network. Deploy a platform solution fabric that can automate enforcement. These, you know, going back to the, the last slide, or, or two slides ago, I should say, where we're looking at 14 million connected medical devices within facilities, this is going to take a high level of automation and orchestration to really do this right. Um, and, and that's really important as well. And then form a strategic relationship with your uh, security technology supplier. So, so both us and Medigate, uh, Fortinet and Medigate, along with your suppliers that you're buying the medical devices from, gain it, you know, build a really close relationship so that, you know, it's a partnership and that you're securing them from when they're coming into your facilities and when you, when you start that engagement. So preparing for healthcare cybersecurity challenges, one, one area that we want to reemphasize is an integrated platform, out of the box, connectivity of third party uh, vendor products and open API system is really important. Uh, Cyber physical coverage, branch networking and security. This is something that I really want to emphasize. 
you know, so many of the connected medical devices that occur, yes, are out in the, the hospitals, but when we look at urgent cares or pharmacies or, um, you know, other um, clinic environments, there's a lot of connected medical devices out there, things like ultrasounds and, and other devices that are, that are highly, um, you know, risk prone. Um, so extending that security fabric out to those uh, smaller facilities, the same that you have in the data center, the same that you have at your, your large health facilities. That's something else we want to emphasize. And then something else that we're really proud of at Fortinet is really our processing efficiency and then our high performance and, and uh, low latency with, you know, with the technology that we, we bring to the table. So expansion of the platform. So, so through integration with the largest industry uh, cybersecurity ecosystem, right now at Fortinet, we've got 400 security fabric ecosystem integrations. So uh, we have a fabric connector, Fortinet developed deep integration, automating security operations and policies. We have our fabric API, it's a partner developed integration using Fabric APIs, providing a broad visibility with end-to-end -end solutions. We have our Fabric DevOps. So this is a community-driven DevOps, scripts automating network and security provisioning, configuration, orchestration. And then our extended Fabric ecosystem, uh, driving integrations with threat sharing initiatives and other vendor technologies. So this is where we really wanna talk about the value of the partnership between Medigate and, and Fortinet. So at Fortinet, we really believe in a, a security-driven ecosystem and a security-driven networking and really ensuring that all of our products across our ecosystem are, are um, integrated holistically. The value that you can bring to the table that, that Stefan will talk about a little bit later in detail is, is we've integrated through our alliance partnership, uh, Medigate into all of our, our, our complete uh, security ecosystem and and we've talked about you know network or zero trust networking network access control and doing that segmentation which is really important and a, and a big use case that a lot of organizations you know utilize but I'll, I'll tell you in my experience from from running large um, health system security teams is is building it also into security operations is, is of equal value right so if there is a threat, an emerging threat amongst the connected medical device, having that intelligence, that clinical content from, from Medigate built into your security-driven operations is so critical. I'll give you an example as a CISO from, from my background. Um, you know, when we had the WannaCry, um, um, you know, um, cyber, you know, incident, you know, we really had to pivot very quickly and having that visibility and being able to respond very quickly and knowing what assets we had on our network, you know, within our security operations center, we, all, we were able to be very confident in what our risk profile was, where we were at from a vulnerability management perspective, and what, what risk and communicate that risk to our executive leadership of which systems we couldn't patch because of, you know, them being a clinical system, and then what that could mean to the organization if those devices were compromised. And then putting in an additional mitigation steps um, to, to, prevent, um, to prevent the attack as well. Uh, the other area I would talk to is, you know, that security-driven networking across SD-WAN, securing the devices out in the clinical, uh, clinic environments, um, in, the, in the urgent care environments, also, also very, very important. And then the next area that we see significant growth is really within uh, cloud security. So many of these new um, connected medical devices are, are utilizing services that are, that are um, supported in the cloud. No longer is the backend systems for connected medical devices that we're hosting within our hospitals and clinics are, the, are those backend systems uh, sitting, in the, sitting in the data centers. They're now in the cloud. So, so having that integrated security networking uh, with SD-WAN up to things like Azure and AWS is, is of the utmost importance as well. So what I wanna do now is I wanna hand it over to Stefan. Stefan is gonna kind of work through and, and talk about the, the Medigate Healthcare um, security solutions.
Awesome. Thank you, Troy. Um, very good stuff. And uh, let's see how, how uh, this framework you have just presented looks from uh, the Medigate perspective. Um, this uh, 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 stack slide or framework uh, is, is how we like to present the, the Medigate platform and, and our uh, core capabilities and technical differentiators. Um, it all starts with uh, the data layer, the data capture layer, where uh, um, our technical capabilities come to play. Uh, first and foremost, the way to protect uh, medical devices, connected devices in general, but, but especially medical devices, uh, is through passive network uh, collection, inspection, uh, resulting in discovery. The word passive is really key here because of the sensitivity of uh, the environments uh, and, and the context of those devices. So active probing and traditional uh, uh, techniques of device discovery is really less relevant or irrelevant for the medical devices in the clinical space. Um, the, the, other, the other three uh, data capture uh, methodologies are active. Active to the infrastructure, meaning uh, integrating with your networking infrastructure, active to the clinical engineering infrastructure, which means integrating with the hospital's uh, information systems, such as um, um, integration engines, um, terminal servers, um, um, and, and ending with uh, the CMMS platform and, and other uh, information systems specific to uh, the HDO. And uh, the, the final uh, data capture technique is uh, uh, active uh, probing to the endpoint to cover the devices outside of the clinical realm. Only when we possibly, positively, po positively identify the device to be non-clinical uh, as, as not a medical device, we can uh, probe the device via uh, an active uh, uh, a technique such as banner grabbing or an SNMP scan and to discover even more details around that device. Leveraging those four collection techniques, emphasizing the passive uh, uh, deep packet inspection architecture and that our platform boasts results in uh, the most comprehensive uh, 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 visibility solution um, an HDO can install to gain 100% visibility to uh, their connected uh, device landscape. Uh, the data insights uh, level is, is even more important. So uh, data capture uh, is, is, is important because th this is how we feed our platform with the data itself, but uh, data by itself, throwing a pile of records on, on uh, um, a security team or an IT team does not result in anything uh, insightful or actionable. So translating this data into an, an insightful layer uh, and, and being able to uh, calculate risk, prioritize devices by this risk, and, 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 and present an actionable plan mitigating this risk is something that, that our platform aims to do, and this comes to play in the data insights layer. So the first one, the passive collection, as, as I meant, um, is uh, parsed and uh, analyzed with uh, the deep packet inspection engine of our uh, platform, not only profiling the devices, as I will uh, show in a few slides, but also getting deeper and extracting uh, device-specific attributes about those connected devices, uh, discovering not only the identity of the device, but also uh, attributes such as the serial number, the name of the device, uh, uh, its application version, and other attributes that are imperative to uh, properly uh, calculate the risk of the device, for example, and, and do other uh, analytics around this connected device. The second pillar is uh, communications and uh, uh, behavioral pro profiles. This is another pillar of, of the Medigate Insights where we take the, the data that we see on the network and we merge it with our clinical uh, knowledge base of uh, uh, baseline that those devices, especially medical devices, uh, how they should perform. So we compare what we see on those networks for those uh, medical devices versus the known and expected behavior. And I will uh, also show how this looks like from 
our uh, UI perspective. And this is a very important uh, attribute of the whole platform because knowing the identity of those devices is not enough uh, or, or seeing what those de devices do on the network is not enough. You, you need to have a contextual recommendation of a subject matter expert to be able to tell you this is how the device is supposed to communicate. This is, here is an ACL and, and anything that deviates from this ACL considered a one-off, a misconfiguration or malicious activity. The third insight layer is uh, pillar, I'm sorry, is uh, about risk assessment, risk and threat analytics, contextualized to healthcare. Mitigate created the first uh, uh, framework to analyze risk specifically for uh, connected devices in the clinical setting. Taking into consideration um, NIST and uh, AMI, American Association for Med Medical Instruments Frameworks, uh, we deduced uh, uh, those two frameworks and took the relevant um, guidelines and created a, a merged framework to ass properly assess risk for uh, medical devices, taking into consideration their business context, their costs, their uh, uh, impact of, of malfunction, and so on. The last fourth uh, insight pillar would be the device utilization. So leveraging those collection techniques, we not only um, discover those devices and put, put, uh, um, uh, point out their identities and their specific uh, attributes, uh, we not only do security analytics such as risk assessment and, and, and policy enforcement, but also uh, we deliver visibility into their operational efficiency. This is very important, especially in this COVID area where HDOs need to be more mindful around cost reduction and, and, and other um, optimization activities around, around their uh, asset management. Uh, Medigate can leverage the same technology of, of, of passive collection of medical device traffic uh, to properly um, uh, assess the usage of those devices connected to the network and uh, uh, recommend insights and recommendations in terms of the lifecycle management of those devices, starting from procurement, ending with deployment and retirement of those devices. The next two layers are the value layers. The, the top layer is how we turn those, uh, th th these, th these data and, and insights into value and uh, towards what organizations within the hospital this value uh, is targeted. So uh, the, the risk assessment framework, analyzing and reducing risk, of course, goes uh, to the security analysts and the risk and compliance people under the CISO's organization. The network policy enforcement uh, uh, go goes to the network IT security team, networking uh, security, the people who are in charge of operating the, the network security infrastructure, the network access controllers, the firewalls. They do have the policy from the security team, but, but the enforcement of the network policies is rolled out and, and defined by them. Uh, detection and response uh, use cases taking our visibility and anomaly detection data and streamlining this data into the hospital SIM is relevant for the, the, the SOC team of the hospital. And finally, this device utilization, this last insight pillar that is translated into uh, what, what, what's called today operational efficiency or the real-time uh, health system uh, targets all the, the, the clinical site officials of the hospital from biomed, biomedical engineers, through the finance and operations people of the hospital. So uh, after reviewing this slide, you can, you can think of Medigate as a platform with uh, four uses or a, a platform, a portfolio with four products, and each one of those products targets a different um, uh, audience in, in, in the hospital. And the same data can be translated into four different insights that are translated into four other different use cases that solve four different problems. So let's take a look how it looks like uh, from a, a demo perspective. Uh, due to some technical uh, um, difficulties, we will not be able to show a live demo today, but rather uh, a sequence of uh, slides. Anyone who, will, uh, who would like to see uh, a live demo and the demo of the integration between Medigate's platform 
uh, to uh, uh, Fortinet's uh, portfolio, Fortinet security product portfolio, um, is more than invited to follow up, but uh, contact details will be left at the end of uh, uh, this uh, presentation. So starting with uh, the dashboard, as you can see here, we map out, uh, um, first and foremost, the, the, the discovery attributes, <clears throat> the device counts of all the devices that are connected to a healthcare systems environment. And uh, as you can see, it does not stop on the medical device level. Uh, it, as, as stated, discovers anything that is connected to the HDO's network medical, IoT, uh, IT, and um, let's take a deeper look at that. Medigate's taxonomy um, consists of three categories. <clears throat> medical devices, anything that is uh, defined by the FDA as a medical device uh, that has a K, K number or M number in the FDA uh, database. IoT devices are um, devices that are not part of the domain, they are not managed, uh, they cannot be easily patched or connected to a system like uh, SCCM or Big Fix or any one of those patch management solutions, uh, but they are not a medical device. A lot of those devices can be also found in, in a hospital because a, hosp a hospital is also an enterprise. Um, general IT solutions like uh, point of sale devices, clocks, card readers, and, and so on. And of course, building automation devices, uh, temperature sensors, and, and, and so on. Ending with your traditional IT landscape, computers and servers, network devices, uh, 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 VoIP phones, and, and, and so on. Clicking on uh, the medical device category, <clears throat> you will see uh, the device profiles, the device types that are discovered uh, by the system. Under medical devices, you'll have five subcategories. Again, FDA's taxonomy, uh, patient devices, radiology devices, lab devices, surgery room devices, and the fifth one is clinical IoT. The fifth one is not an official subcategory. It's just all the IoT devices that are unique to the clinical setting. Uh, medication dispensing system is a good example. A medical device integrator, um, um, an RTLS system, a, a printer, and, and so on. So let's click on the infusion pumps and speak a little bit about the level of visibility and the granularity of the data. Uh, as you can see here, those infusion pumps uh, in, in this uh, made up demo hospital uh, are uh, uh, manufactured by Alaris. And those infusion pumps specifically, uh, uh, you, you can observe that uh, this second record here has the same IP address as the three consequent records and the same MAC address as the three consequent records. It's not that we have four duplicates of the same pump, it's that there, there is a network attached pump that is uh, used to connect uh, pump modules to the network through its uh, base unit. And uh, again, I want to emphasize this is done passively through collection of the traffic that this pump generates towards its systems manager, towards its uh, uh, management uh, gateway. And uh, this level of visibility of seeing those modules behind the pump wouldn't be possible if uh, without DPI, without the back inspection. So uh, when this pump is discovered, and <clears throat> this is what happens when you click on the pump record, you are presented with uh, the pump's profile and all the attributes that uh, were picked up from the, from the wire, from the network around this pump, including the pump's uh, application version and serial number. So a lot of times when <clears throat> I'm asked to compare um, deep packet inspection from a technology perspective to other profiling techniques, um, the leading of which is statistical modeling or machine learning, um, I, I, I'd say it's, it's easy to, uh, or not, not easy, it's easier to be able to tell a man speaks Chinese than to actually understand Chinese and know what the man says. So it is easier to, know, to, to see uh, a, a certain port being used in a Mac OUI and maybe a destination IP address and to deduce the, the profile of the device to be able to say, oh, this is a pump, it is easier to do that uh, rather than parsing the actual communications 
that this pump creates towards the management system of, 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 um, of this pump. And only by parsing those communications, one will be able to extract device-specific attributes such as the pump's application version and serial number. Those attributes are important not only to boast uh, uh, granular discovery or for asset management uh, purposes, but uh, more importantly, like one of the use cases, as, as said before, is proper risk assessment. To be able to tell whether this pump is vulnerable uh, to a certain vulner vulnerability or not, uh, one needs to know its application version, uh, like shown here. Um, and and uh, this application version may be updated or, or outdated, Anyhow, it is correlated to uh, a vulnerability, and specific in this case, there is a vulnerability. Um, Urgent 11 is relevant for, for this specific uh, uh, model. And uh, listing that uh, this, this uh, pump is vulnerable to, uh, this pump's firmware is outdated, uh, allows us to passively correlate uh, this vulnerability to this specific device. So by, by knowing the application that this pump runs passively picked up from the network, we are able to correlate vulnerabilities to those devices, thus being able to perform accurate risk assessment without active scanning. As said before, the device vulnerability and the network components of uh, those devices are not the only important uh, points or attributes uh, for uh, risk assessment for medical devices, but, but the severity of harm, the impact that, that uh, this device may, uh, may inflict if uh, a cybersecurity incident uh, uh, occurs, uh, is calculated and deduced by healthcare-specific attributes. So, for example, you have uh, this device's FDA class type, the equipment class, the consequence of failure of this device, as, by the way, not defined by Medigate, but in this case, FDA class type is defined by the FDA, and the uh, consequence of failure is defined by uh, the Joint Commission. Um, so th those data types, <coughs> data sources are ingested into the same uh, um, single pane of glass, which in this case is, 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 is our risk uh, management framework, and used to accurately calculate clinically contextualized risk score for those devices. Moving on, uh, under the same page, um, we uh, not only discover the identity of the device and use those attributes to assess risk and, and perform other analytics, but we also map the communication of those devices. And this is very important towards where, where we get. Um, without, without mapping those communications, it will be harder to verify our recommendations around uh, what this device should and should not do on the network. So you can see here that on the leftmost uh, bar is the pump itself. Then you have internal versus internal traffic breakdown. Uh, the last breakdown is by port and protocol, um, essentially the application that is being used. Um, and I, I'm, when I use the, the word application, I mean a communication uh, level of uh, application, like layer 7. Uh, communication type, and, and in this case, Alaris DCMP is the application that this pump uses to communicate with its uh, uh, pump gateway. Those other uh, protocols that are being used here are general network services. From, from here, we can present uh, how we translate those communication patterns and fuse it with our clinical specific know-how and generate recommendations, in this, in this case in form of Cisco switch ACLs uh, for a wireless controller or for, for a switch uh, to enforce on the spot. This ACL can then be taken by an enforcement platform such as Fortinet's Fortinet and pushed out to the environment to enforce policy on those devices. Going back to the risk factor, again, what, like from a security perspective, what are we trying to accomplish here? Uh, we are trying to map out the risk that those unpatched, unmanaged, dangerous devices pose to your environment and to suggest mitigation and remediation steps. When there is a patch available, we'll point this out, this out right away, but we'll not stop there because uh, 
that patching, when available, is, is, is pretty timely. We'll always uh, also suggest a network, uh, network policy mitigation uh, route as well, that uh, even if a patch exists, and in most cases it does not exist, to remediate a vulnerability and to uh, lower the risk of the device, um, our platform will suggest such a network policy for this device to allow only the communication the communications that this device needs uh, to fulfill its clinical functionality and to forbid anything else. So essentially, if this device was vulnerable to, I'll, I'll take Troy's example, WannaCry, this ACL will be explicitly allowing only the clinical and services communications that it needs to communicate over the network and blocking, implicitly blocking anything else, including the, the SMB port for this device. Maybe this infusion pump is not the greatest example because it's not a Windows device, but those big iron radiology devices that are pretty critical to the hospital's operations, this is what we do for our customers. We create those uh, network policies. We explicitly allow only the communications that uh, those devices need to uh, operate properly, and we implicitly uh, deny anything else, including the, the, the ports and protocols that, that uh, the vulnerabilities uh, uh, that live on those devices are susceptible to. Moving on, um, well, beyond the visibility and, and the policies that are expected, exported to those policy orchestration uh, uh, platforms like the Fortinet 49 and Fortinet uh, 40 gate firewall, uh, we also um, have other capabilities in the tool to help out the hospital's network security team to, to really plan out a comprehensive segmentation plan. Um, the view that, that, that you see right now, we call it the, the, the communication matrix. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, what, what you really see here in the rows and the columns of the matrix, you see the various device types, the device groups that Medigate discovered in this specific environment. The dots stand for observed communication. So in this manner, this dot here stands for uh, a, a medication dispensing system that communicated with an infusion pump. Uh, and, and as can be seen by the color of the dot, this is considered to be anomalous activity something that is not part of the baseline behavior as known by Medigate Labs, uh, neither for the pumps nor for the uh, dispensing systems. This view can help uh, HDOs segment their environments into groups, into bins, not necessarily to many bins as, as, as presented here. We have various aggregation layers uh, under, under this view by, you can switch from device type to subcategory and to category. So really uh, it's, it's highly customizable and you can uh, create uh, segmentation views from um, anything like uh, pretty small and scalable like three or five groups to, and, and go to a device type level and have more than more than 60 uh, groups in, in this matrix. Turning it into more, uh, into bigger and, and a little harder to maintain and manage, but uh, in, in the same time, uh, uh, the, the policies that this matrix will enforce on uh, the network will, will be uh, much more granular and narrow for those devices. Um, there is always a, a, t a tension or a balance between how secure you want to go versus how simple and functional you want your security framework to be. So th this, of course, also is reflected in, 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 this, uh, in this view in this tool. Um, to finish up my, my portion of the presentation, um, a few, few screenshots of, of, of Fortinac here. Um, so uh, what the, the, essentially the integration between Medigate and, uh, and, and Fortinet's uh, NAC starts with exporting all the visibility attributes that Medigate discovers around medical, clinical, and IoT devices in the HDO or the, the clinical enterprise, thus turning those devices from unknowns or, or rogue devices into registered devices, streamlining a lot of like onboarding processes and, and access control processes for onboarding those uh, devices on the hospital's network. 
and it continues with, with streamlining policies, we can use those attributes to put those devices into groups that, that later can be enforced with various policies. Simple policies such as putting those devices on specific VLANs that are designated to be like radiology VLAN or medical VLAN, uh, a functional VLAN, how we uh, used to call it internally, and uh, more sophisticated uh, actions uh, that, that are planned in the, in the near term future to take those network policies, those, those ACLs that, that I showed a few slides ago, and uh, to roll out uh, the infusion pump ACL or the radiology uh, Siemens, uh, Siemens radiology ACL to the devices that are classified by Medigate as a Siemens radiology or as a, an infusion pump. So we, in, in, in essence, to summarize, we take the visibility portion, we push this out to the devices managed by the policy enforcement orchestration platform uh, to give context to those uh, unidentified devices. And as a second phase, we uh, uh, provide the, the policy recommendations for those devices uh, um, in terms of how to narrow down their attack surface and, and, and what actions should be taken to mitigate the risk they pose to the healthcare environment. I think I'll pause here and we'll uh, open, open this up uh, to questions. Um, I'll stop on this slide that, uh, that you can take the details uh, while we answer the Q&A and, and uh, that you can contact us in the future. Thank you. All right, thank you, Stefan and Troy, for a really informative presentation. As you mentioned, uh, we do have a few minutes for q and I'd like to take one quick reminder to uh, let the audience know that you can use a QA and a box uh, to the left of your uh, video window uh, at any time now through the end of the program to submit a question. We'll get to as many as we could. Uh, first question, for which uh, for what portion of medical devices can you passively acquire the serial number? I would say that, that for, to answer the question, I'll divide the, the devices into the various uh, categories. For medical, it would be above 90%. Every device that communicates the serial number over the network to its management system will be parsed and picked up by Medigate. This, this is one of the core differentiators, we have built this tool to understand the medical uh, protocols of those devices and how they communicate to their management system. So the percentage is, is very high and the ones that we do not pick up the serial numbers for is simply because those devices organically do not communicate them over the network. Those serial numbers can be completed by integrations with uh, those, uh, the, the, the management systems of those devices or by active probing if decided to do so. Great, next question. Can I use Medigate to automatically push policies to FortiGate? Correct, yes. That, that, that is uh, the, the first level of the integration is uh, the data exchange, the visibility data exchange, where we uh, tag uh, address objects with contextual tags to give them a name, to give them the identity. And as a second phase, this is something we are working currently, is to take those ACLs and to translate them into firewall rules. That is not 100% automated. There is uh, a portion in this uh, process that, that still involves a, a manual action that is required from the 40 gate uh, or 40 manager operator to perform. Uh, but the information is there, as, as, as you have seen, and uh, uh, a portion of the, of the whole process is automated, but still involves a, a manual action as of today, and we are working to streamline that to a fully automated process. Great. Next question. How do you deal with devices that connect and disconnect to and from the network frequently? For example, as devices are turned on and off and move from one patient to another. So I, I, I'm not sure like, if, the, if the question is asked from an asset management perspective or, or, or a security perspective, so I'll answer both. From an asset management perspective, 
if the question addresses how do we track devices uh, given the situation they frequently change IP addresses, is that we do not consider an IP address as a unique identifier, exactly for that reason. A device is like most of those clinical devices, not, not, not the big iron, not the MRIs and the CT scanners, but rather uh, the, the infusion pumps and the glucometers and the patient monitors, the ones that are found in high numbers in uh, the hospital, those, are, uh, those live on, on DHCP segments and, and are, are getting uh, new IPs uh, every time they reconnect or the lease uh, is, is, is outdated. In, in, in such scenarios, tracking the device by IP does not make any sense. So we do consider a unique identifier uh, as a unique identifier the MAC, the MAC address of the device and the serial number of the device. Uh, we can also use a combination of the names of the device. The device has a host name, uh, not necessarily like an Active Directory host name because it can be not attached to the, to the domain, but uh, a local name or a SNMP host name. So we take those attributes and consider them unique identifiers, thus track the devices even uh, given the fact it changes uh, IP addresses. That's the asset management portion of the answer. From a security perspective, uh, if a device changes its location, for example, the patient monitor was connected to port A and then to port B, how do we ensure the policy is still properly enforced? That is what our policy enforcement partners do. Uh, and, and, and that is the, the 40 NAC portion of the, uh, of, of the, the, the streamlining of, of policy enforcement. The 40 NAC will attach the device to the port and then by the information given by Medigate, we'll attach the proper policy to be enforced on that specific port. All well, right, next question. In the ransomware events that you mentioned, have medical, device been com medical devices been compromised? Yeah, so I can take that one. Uh, this is Troy, but um, so absolutely. And even, you know, more relevant to this one most recently as, as uh, ransomware uh, actors are, are, you know, being more patient and getting deeper into organizations. But the areas that we're seeing, you know, within our FortiGuard labs and our incident response teams, and then what I've seen out in the field is, is radiology equipment, right? So Windows-based radiology equipment, PAX modalities uh, being compromised, uh, lab analyzers, and then uh, perinatal equipment. That would be four examples where we've seen uh, ransomware attacks, you know, be able to um, be successful on you know medical devices in the in the field, uh, and 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 that's why we're seeing the the longer downtimes, right, and and the deeper impact of patient care, you know, and why we're seeing uh, health systems uh, take longer and longer to to recover because when you have a a PAX modality or some perinatal equipment go down you know, partnering and having that partner come back in and do that re-implementation of that system and, and testing and that type of thing takes some significant time. And the next question kind of segues into that answer. Are there examples of where Medigate is used in a medical instrument, such as an MRI machine? And if so, what benefits are there in leveraging your products for such a use case? Um, not sure I understood the question, so let, let's try reading this out again, if you don't mind. Uh, do you have examples of where Medigate is used in a medical instrument, such as an MRI machine, and if so, what benefits are there in leveraging the product for such a use case? Yeah, so... so I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. He's asking, is it embedded, uh, is Medigate embedded into medical devices like an MRI? That's how I read the question. Okay. Okay, so let's answer both uh, versions. If, if it's uh, Troy's version of the question, so the answer is absolutely no. Medigate is not embedded in any medical device. It's a, an agent-less uh, platform. We do not require any piece of software to be installed anywhere, not on your laptop computer server, neither on your IoT or medical devices. Everything is done via uh, passive network capture and integrations with uh, uh, management systems uh, in the hospital. Um, if I read it from a different perspective, does Medigate support uh, uh, um, 
that the, the discovery and production of MRI machines? But the answer is absolutely. Not only MRI machines, anything that is connected to your network will be profiled to the granular level uh, described before. Uh, and uh, all the analytics from risk assessment uh, through policy enforcement and uh, asset management and the other parts of the, of the product we did not have time to present today will be delivered for those devices. All right, next question. Given, uh, given the growing complexity associated with securing one's infrastructure, how does the partnership between Medigate and Fortinet make implementation easier? Great question. Uh, Troy, would, would, you, would you mind to start and I'll come and talk? Yeah. So I, I think, you know, through this joint alliance, uh, Medigate and, and Fortinet are com committed to the integrate, integration to Fortinet's open APIs and extending the Fortinet security fabric. Uh, we believe that's going to reduce the complexity and make it easier for customers to roll out security solutions. Uh, right now, Medigate, I think, you know, just kind of building upon what Stefan says, currently has integrations with Fortinac, Fortigate, and Fortimanager, and conti will continue to build upon that integration as well. Yeah, and uh, maybe I, I will add that uh, the, the, the question is really um, speaks to the, to the value of the integration. The integration is not only about exchanging data. It's about saving time and streamlining processes. Uh, so the partnership is, is uh, maybe it started with calling APIs, but, but it definitely continues and will continue in the future uh, to look at, at, at use cases, um, real world use cases our, our co-customers uh, use that uh, uh, can be better accommodated by process automation uh, by, by Medigate and Fortinet. From a device discovery and policy orchestration and, 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 and the, the planning side from the Medigate perspective, and then from a rollout and, and the actual enforcement on the infrastructure uh, perspective by, by Fortinet. Great, next question. The vendors in the IoT cybersecurity solution market are strikingly similar in the claims that they make. Where do you think Medigate is most plainly differentiated? Um, I think that, if, again, it, it goes back to the, to the stack slide, that first and foremost, it's about visibility and the granularity and the level of detail of visibility in healthcare. If you are in oil and gas and somehow ended up in this uh, webinar, I would recommend looking at other tools, not only on ours. We'll do good on the enterprise side, but we are not an OT or, or industrial control system security tool. We were not designed, we were not built to do this. Um, we were built to be deployed in a, in, a, in a hospital data center to pick up vast amounts of traffic transmitted from the hospital floors to that data center and to understand the specific communications of those devices and passively discover them. This is first and foremost the most, uh, the biggest differentiator. If you plug and play, and I know messaging sounds the same, but, but if you go on and, and decide to test Medigate in a POC back to back with another uh, IoT security tool, you will see the clinical context. You will see that this UI, this platform was built for healthcare, that we do not have strange add-ons such as having an MDS square form section under network. We have a specific section in the platform for risk analytics and management, and, and, and this is where uh, those, those um, uh, components fit in. And this is the, the healthcare specificity of the company and, and the platform. And uh, again, as I said, you, you will see the difference in the, in the comprehensiveness of the discovery and the level of detail uh, in, in the in the discovery devices, including the, the attributes such as application versions and serial numbers for medical devices. The other differentiators uh, speak to the unique risk management framework. Uh, the, the very important differentiator, and maybe this should come before the risk assessment, are the, 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 the policy recommendations, having out of the box recommendations for medical and IoT devices. Not only who is the device or what is the device, but what it is supposed to do and what is it forbidden to do on the network. Those would be the main, the three main differentiators. Visibility, policy recommendations, contextualized risk framework. 
Great. Next question. How our clinical workflows for all of our medical devices constantly enforce policy on our network, network access controls and firewalls? Yeah, so I can I can take that one, Stefan. So so I think you know the confidence is gained through the visibility and intelligence. I think when when organizations try to do um, you know medical device security programs holistically, where, where they fall down is is uh, that that integration between the visibility and the enforcement. And you know when you're building those enforcement policies, being really confident in knowing what you're enforcing and knowing what you're protecting. And, and that's really key because as you're operating a health system and as you're securing that health system, you know, you can't have a failure and, and knock down a device because you segmented it in a way that, you know, it, it can't operate and, and do, do patient care. So, so that's, that's one thing that's, that's really important. Um, and then I think just, you know, being really confident that you can take all of that contextual data now and into the future and, and build that across your security program is, is important as well. Great. Next question. It sure seems like all security roles, roads ultimately lead to network segmentation. Uh, is that always the end game in your mind? You know, I think that it's, um, you know, probably one of the most effective protection areas. Uh, however, I, I think other areas where this, you know, contextual, clinical contextual awareness of these connected medical devices that provide significant value to, to a security team and, and not only the security team, right, as is, is we look at 2021 and, and the challenges that health systems are having financially, um, being able to drive value out of asset management as well. But, but the other areas within the, the security space outside of network access control would be security operations. You've heard me talk a lot about that. I, I think that if, if I hear anything from my security operations teams more than others, that if they've got to have the visibility, they've got to know what the assets are that drives everything that they do when they're, when they're building playbooks and executing playbooks and protecting the organization. But then, again, I could pivot over to vulnerability management, right? Uh, knowing what you're potentially going to provide patches or know what devices don't have a patch and are vulnerable so that you can, you know, contact those vendors and raise the, the threat profile of those devices. Exactly. I, I would say the best way to mitigate risk is to enforce policy, whether it's uh, network segmentation, to enforce policy between groups, or to enforce policy in a device-centric uh, manner. Uh, but uh, absolutely, if you have a patch, if you have a remediation um, plan for a device, a patch that solves the vulnerability, so that is definitely the, 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 way, uh, the way to go. And uh, as I said, even if there is a patch, it's not that you need to forget about network-centric mitigation. You need to do both concurrently. All right, unfortunately that is all the time that we have for today, but I'd like to once again thank Stefan and Troy for uh, just an excellent and informative webinar. I'd like to of course thank our sponsor, Medigate, sponsors Medigate and Fortinet for making today's program possible. Just a quick reminder, if you have any questions about today's presentation, please feel free to contact Medigate or Fortinet using the information that is right now uh, on your screen. Finally, I'd like to thank everyone in our audience for joining us. We hope you'll join us in the future for another Healthcare Innovation Webinar. And with that, this concludes today's presentation.